You ready? I'm ready. Kick it off for us, buddy. Right. Is, is my mic ready? Yeah, mic's ready, okay. All right, so let me start by uh, asking everyone a question. Have you ever heard someone say, I support the Second Amendment, but I think we need common sense gun restrictions? <laughs> All right. Well, you can't do both. You can't support my right to keep and bear arms while simultaneously restricting my right to keep and bear arms. But people don't understand this. We understand it, but a lot of people in our country don't. You see, they're being conditioned to, view, to see rights as privileges, uh, to see rights, rights as privileges. See, a privilege is something that's, I, I always say a privilege is man-made. It's something that can be given and can be taken away. Privilege um, can be used as a form of leverage. So your kid doesn't finish their homework, so they lose the privilege of staying up past nine o'clock. Privilege can be taken away. It's a way of getting people to conform to a certain ideal. A right cannot be taken away. A right is inherent, part of being human. It's God-given. But, as we see in our society, um, people don't necessarily understand that, and they, they see rights as privileges. So it's just a, it's just a distinction that I'd like to try to make uh, and point out. Um, another one would be, um, nobody needs an AR-15. Nobody needs to carry a gun. Why do, you, why do you need to carry a gun? Why do you need guns? And they like to attach the word need to gun ownership because they know it's a right, but they don't want it to be. They want it to be a need or a privilege because if it's a need, it can be measured. In other words, if it's a need, there will be a metric of measurement that would determine whether or not you need to carry a gun. So who do you think would be determining whether or not you need to carry a gun. It's certainly not gonna be the NRA. It's gonna be, right? it's gonna be some left-wing Democrats. Um, so so that, that metric of, of need is in there. It's not, it's not um, a real thing, but if they can convince people in society that gun ownership should be measured by need, then that way people will start to act that way. So watch out for the word need. Um, another thing with, you know, with need, um, I always use the example that, can you imagine, okay, so here's a scenario, let me give you a scenario. You're in your house, a uh, couple people, a couple guys break in and they try to rob you, they try to kill you. You shoot them, they end up dead in your front yard. Can you imagine how many lawyers would be lined up to determine to fight and argue that you didn't need to use a gun. You could have defended yourself many other ways. You could have used a baseball bat. You could have used, uh, you could have hid. You could have, you and your family could have hid in the closet. You could have retreated. There are many other things, but you didn't need to use a gun. So that's why need is so important in this conversation. We have to watch out for the terminology that they use, and need is a very important one. Rights and privileges is another, another important one. Um, so I do talk a lot about terminology and how it, um, how it affects the way we think about guns. And you've heard the terms, assault weapon, you know, uh, blood on your hands, you've heard that one, the blood is on your hands, you know, weapons of war, you know, assault weapon, really was a term that wasn't really used until the 90s, until Dianne Feinstein brought it into the conversation. Now everybody uses the term assault weapon, and it's really just a term designed to scare people. I mean, it's a term that's designed to associate, you know, scary, scary weapons with, you know, violence with weapons. So, and then, um, you know, the weapons of war. That was one that was used a lot by Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton. They use these terms to scare people. They don't necessarily mean anything, but for people who don't know any better, they get frightened, they're scared to death of guns. Uh, another one, and this is what I call the big daddy of all the anti-gun terminology, is the term gun violence. Now, 
There's no such thing as gun violence. Gun violence doesn't exist. There is human violence. We should be talking about human violence, but we're not. Why is that? It's because the anti-gun crowd wants to associate violence with guns. I mean, it's a, it's a perfect way of making the two words almost synonymous, gun violence. And we find people using those terms all the time. But if we were to really look at the, the, cause, you know, the causes of human violence, which is really where we should be talking, you know, we, if we can fix some of the problems that we have in our society, we could look at open borders, sanctuary cities, uh, rampant pharmaceutical drug use. We could talk about uh, welfare dependency. We could talk about gun-free zones where killers choose 98% of the time. These are all policies that the anti-gun crowd supports. So of course, they don't want to talk about human violence because a lot of these policies are the cause of human violence. They would much rather see the focus be redirected to guns because that's an easy argument. They don't know how to fix human violence. So, so those are a couple of things I talk about. I'll, I'll give you one more thing. I don't want to take up too much time here. We talk about the strongest human emotions and the best ways to manipulate the thought process of people when it comes to the topic of guns. Uh, there are two, two ways that are, that are done to you and to everybody. Um, they're fear and hate. Now, fear is used all the time with guns because every time we see a, we see a, a killing, a, a school killing or anything like that, the first thing they do is they run that AR-15 across the TV screen. That's to make you scared of guns. You're supposed to think, oh my God, let's get rid of these things. So fear is, a, is a, a very good way of getting people to, uh, to denounce gun ownership, to stay away from the gun range. They don't want to learn because they're scared. They, they think that guns are automatically going off all by themselves. They think that little diaper bottom babies all over the country are getting a hold of their parents' guns that are just laying around loaded. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's ridiculous. but. People who don't know any better actually believe this stuff. They're scared to death of guns. And the media keeps perpetuating this fear. They keep cultivating this fear in our society. Now, we know better because most of us here, I can assume, maybe I might be wrong, but I would assume most of us here are gun owners and we understand that there's just, just nothing to be scared of. Once you understand guns, you the fear goes away. Because what, what happens to fear once we get that knowledge? We get the, the information, we learn about something, the fear goes away. The fear is really just a, a lack of understanding. It's a lack of information. So the anti-gun crowd loves to keep people in a lack, of, a lack of information and keep perpetuating and cultivating that fear. So the other thing, what I talked about, is hate. Now, if you notice, you know, the anti-gun crowd, they, they hate you. They think that gun owners are recklessly and intentionally putting everyone in danger because that's what they're told every day. They think the NRA is this huge lobbying group that's out there just to sell guns or something and, and they don't care about children, you know? So that builds a hatred. Now you take those two emotions, you take fear and hate, and you cultivate that into our society, into people who will take on that notion, those notions. You cultivate that into society, you keep perpetuating it, and you have anti-gun warriors. And these are the people that we're dealing with. This is the stuff that I talk about, and I, and I get more, in, in my books, I get more into how are we going to understand this, and how are we gonna better help some of them, because we can help some of them, but some of them we can't. Some of them we'll never be able to help. So how can we understand, how can we win the argument, how can we protect the Second Amendment and, uh, and, and preserve it for our kids, our grandkids, and, and even further on down the line? But it's first understanding the thought process, and then it's a group effort in changing the narrative. 
And that's the, that's the stuff that I, that I talk about. So it's the narrative. It's all about the narrative and how are we going to have a better understanding about guns in our culture. So that's it. Great. Thank you very Thank much, Dan. We appreciate that knowledge.